2021 has been quite the momentous year for O2 in the UK, with compelling RAN evolution mixed with significant corporate change. I start this year's end of year roundup outside the same rooftop that commenced last year's end of year O2 UK video. And the reason for this is, as some of you will remember, this site has triple band Ericsson remote radios capable of 700 megahertz, 800 megahertz and 900 megahertz. And back then I suggested that O2 would likely get 700 megahertz spectrum, in part evidence because of their deployment of these radios. And that did in fact happen. In the spectrum auctions at the start of 2021, O2 acquired 2 by 10 megahertz of 700 megahertz spectrum in addition to 1 by 40 megahertz in the 3.6 to 3.8 gigahertz range. Jake was the first of us to find the O2 700 megahertz in use, picking it up as 5G off a brand new Orion monopole. As time has gone on, more and more people have been picking up the O2 700 megahertz and it has been consistently 5G. However, I went on a little trip around Belfast yesterday and found that the mast behind me is actually broadcasting 700 megahertz as 4G. So why the difference? Well, in much of the UK, I felt it, it, it made a lot of sense to jump straight to 5G with the 700 megahertz. After all, O2 has 4G deployed on 800 megahertz as well as, in many cases, 900 megahertz, which means up to 20 megahertz paired of low band 4G, which is actually quite a lot. However, Northern Ireland and Belfast, where I am now, are quite different to the rest of the UK. O2 has a disproportionately larger market share over here compared to the UK as a whole. And also, unlike much of the rest of the UK, O2 cannot deploy 2300 megahertz here. This means that O2 does not have one of their key capacity tools in a market which really requires it. And while O2 has recently started to deploy 2600 megahertz TDD over here, which I'll talk about later, that's 15 megahertz and is therefore a lot less than the 40 megahertz of 2300 megahertz which is readily deployed in much of the rest of the UK. The resulting capacity gap on 4G is therefore presumably for the time being being filled through this 700 megahertz 4G. This all rather neatly links us to O2's 2600 megahertz TDD deployment which has spread quite rapidly since I first found it by accident back in October. O2 acquired the 2600 MHz spectrum off EE in a spectrum trade towards the end of 2020. During this, O2 acquired 25 MHz of unpaired spectrum, however the upper and lower 5 MHz sections of that 25 are power restricted and therefore they are only broadcasting with 15 megahertz unpaired of 2600 megahertz spectrum at sites like the one behind me here which is in the Ravens Hill area near Lanyon Place train station. This site is one of the four in Belfast to broadcast the 2600 megahertz TDD spectrum at the moment and it's the one closest to Belfast city centre, although all four sites are in urban areas and nicely spread out. This site is also very impressive in terms of what else it carries. So it has the triple band radios for low band, although I haven't seen any 700 megahertz of it just yet. Though it does have L08, L09, L18, L21, as well as the L26 and also um, N78 5G. For 15 MHz of TDD, performance is pretty good and could be improved through the use of other subframe formats. For those outside of Northern Ireland where the 2300 MHz spectrum is being used, don't feel disheartened though, for we have seen planning applications mentioning 2600 MHz and the ERS4418 radios which are used for its deployment here 
on planning applications in cities in England, for example. So you can expect to get this at some point. It's just clearly, given the spectrum situation over here, it was probably a bit of a priority to get some deployed in Belfast and Northern Ireland. O2 stalls have also been getting quite the RAN upgrade, receiving 5G small cells from Nokia. These help the stores to showcase the capability of 5G devices. Helpfully, that store also triggers another talking point, namely Virgin Media O2, a joint venture between Liberty Global and Telefonica formed from the merger of their respective Virgin Media and O2 UK businesses. Virgin Media O2 was formed in June 2021 and creates a formidable telecoms supergiant given Virgin Media's predominantly cable fixed network footprint together with O2's mobile cellular network. That then just leaves two topics to talk about which to my knowledge do not have presence in Northern Ireland. The first are the Orion monopoles, which are O2's flagship compact structural solution, typically for streets, areas, and like pedestrian footways. Now, Jake and I made a video on location in Cardiff talking about these in quite a lot of detail. So I'm not going to kind of duplicate that by going over them in detail here, but I'd recommend that those interested watch that video. The second topic is 256 Cram Uplink, which boosts upload performance compared to 64 Cram for those users who are in sufficient conditions to use 256 Cram as their modulation scheme. While editing, a thought came up around O2's win in the 3.6 to 3.8 gigahertz range. The 40 megahertz that O2 acquired during this year's auction is vastly separate from their existing 40 megahertz block in the N78 band. And this is very suboptimal for numerous different reasons. And actually likewise, Vodafone's win in that auction was also vastly separated from Vodafone's existing block. So the two providers agreed a spectrum trade which Ofcom agreed to in August. We haven't seen any movement in this area in terms of actual deployments yet, which is why the topic has not been focused more heavily during the course of this video. Thanks for watching this 2021 end of year summary roundup for the O2 UK network, or perhaps I should call it Virgin Media O2 now. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope to see you on the rest of the end of year videos, which will be coming up at some point in the future, when I get time.